Network marketing. What are they afraid of? That's what we're going to talk about today. So what are they afraid of and who is they? They would be the media. And of course, the media would be uh, television, radio, it'd be magazines, it'd be newspapers, it would be blogs now, um, you know, social media, things like that. So, uh, so it's going to be the media or the puppet master. Uh, in other words, the person that is writing the script, if you will, of the teleprompter that the puppet is actually talking. OK, so uh, so what I'm, I'm going to do here, you know, I've been talking about a lot uh, with with various different things having to do with the media. And uh, I've gotten a lot of comments and a lot of questions. And so I just thought I would come at this a little bit different uh, so that you can see the angle, because I kept answering the same responses to uh, some of the comments. OK. All right. So I'm going to show you some clues. And then at the very end, I'm going to ask you to figure out what are they afraid of? All righty, so um, when are people smart, All right? So it's when they take and chase back to source, okay? That's the important piece. Every data point continually asking who, what, why, and motive, all right? So um, let me give you a little bit of background and kind of like how I ended up uh, kind of being pushed off a cliff uh, that I didn't really want to jump off. So. I was, um, I had just gotten out of the military and my check was about $65,000 a month in my first, in, first network marketing company. And then um, all of a sudden we got hit by uh, the media and there was an attorney general that was saying that my company was an illegal pyramid scheme, action imminent, to quote the USA Today. And um, so then I, you know, and a whole bunch of my team scattered. My check dropped from $65,000 a month to $16,000 a month. And, uh, and while I can't ever get any sympathy for only earning $16,000 a month, it was quite a haircut to me, right? So I, um, I didn't really know if my company was an illegal pyramid scheme or not, all right? So when people scattered, I didn't know whether to follow them or to stay with the company. And so I was a bit in this point where I'm like, okay, I've got to go back to what I learned in the military about chasing intelligence back to the source and what went on right there, what was going on and things like that. So uh, because we in the bomb squad died or lived based upon our ability to evaluate intelligence. It's not just gathering intelligence. It's the proper evaluation of that intelligence. And so uh, so we would or I did in, uh, in my company, I chase back who I chase back what I chase back why and all of these things. There were a total of nine attorney generals who had uh, ganged together to say that uh, this company was an illegal pyramid scheme. And so I found myself going through the actual facts on the scene and uh, in determining what is a pyramid scheme and how does it get adjudicated that uh, it's a pyramid scheme and when is it not and how does that get adjudicated and where did it all originate from so I ended up chasing it all the way back and, and, and reading case studies and things like that that's what makes a person smart what <laughs> people are not smart because they can repeat fiction okay so when somebody throws out an opinion uh, in the media or something like that that doesn't necessarily mean that it's fact, okay? That doesn't make them smart just because they can repeat some fiction piece that they got out there, all right? Uh, journalist, um, and, uh, and I'm, I'm going back to when I was a child, right? Um, there was a gentleman by the name of uh, Walter Cronkite, okay? My dad used to absolutely love him and would always tune into his show and I asked him why, and he said, well, because they don't, he doesn't put opinion. He presents both sides of a story, and he doesn't add in his opinion. And so that's kind of what made him a legend, if you will. And um, so no opinion is added there. And then uh, today, um, journalism is very different. In fact, it is in 
really even journalism, if you will. It's really just sales pitches. Uh, it's positioning and things like that. Here's what they do today. So um, they establish an agenda first, okay? And then they find positioning statements, all right? So let's say that they go out and they, they want to, you know, they establish that they want to write a negative article in network marketing. And then they're going to go and they're going to find somebody who, let's say that they claim that they're an expert on pyramid schemes and MLM. And so, uh, so they're going to go through that person's book or that blog or articles that they've written or something like that. And then they're going to extract out a statement and they're going to use that as their positioning statement. Okay. Now, if you don't know what a positioning statement is, is, is that it is a statement often in bold or whatever. And then they will quote the author of that. And if they have written a book, great, right? So they get to say, you know, author of or something like that, okay? So, so now that they've got a statement positioned, then they embellish, proving whatever their agenda was, okay? So that's kind of like what journalism is today. Uh, there does not need to be a balance of story. And even viewers have, have stopped even looking for it. Right. Well, what does the other side say? Uh, things like that. You know, the viewer has uh, kind of like been dulled down and trained to not even wonder what it is. And, uh, and I find that very interesting. Um, <clears throat> and for those of you who want to hunt down and look for good sources, if you will, from a legal standpoint, you can look at Kevin Thompson. I highly recommend him and Jeff Babner. And the other thing from a legal standpoint um, make sure that you're looking at current data, all right? So case law, no, you don't have to look at current data, but you want to look at the most current of, the, of those things, okay? Um, the other thing is that with each administration, and I'm talking about political administration, you will find different, slight differences uh, in terms of like what this new administration is doing in, as regards to network marketing or in regards to network marketing, okay? All right, so uh, <clears throat> recently there was a, uh, an article, a uh, video that was done uh, by the BBC and, uh, and I wanna like throw down some clues for you here and, uh, and I'll show you these pos the positioning that the person was after and then uh, how they quote proved it and how uh, anybody who has just a little tiny bit of awareness would be able to just go, oh my gosh, okay? All right, so uh, the company that they were attacking was uh, Unique and New Skin. They really focused on Unique pro mostly. And what they were gonna do is prove, and I put those in quotes, uh, that the products are expensive, all right? And um, this was uh, out absolutely outrageous to me. Um, they set up a booth on the street, and, uh, and I want you to just picture that this uh, table right here is uh, the table, right? And so, uh, so there was a girl walking by, and, uh, and all this is being video recorded, and a woman's walking really fast by, and she goes, you want some makeup? Okay. Now, why was this journalist doing this? Okay, so she said she's doing an uh, investigative report, undercover investigative report. Right. And so she wanted and so she uh, created a fictitious name. She signed up in unique and then she's going to prove that the products are too expensive and saying that people don't want it. OK, so this is the way she's going about proving it. The booth lady walks by and she goes, you want any makeup? OK, that was her sales pitch. OK, then it cuts to another screen and there's a two camera shoot. In other words, there were two cameras on some person who was standing on the other side of the table. And, um, and she says, uh, she goes, I'm trying to think of the exact line she says. She goes, uh, what do you think of the prices, eh? And I was like, really? That's how you're going? Like, if I really, like, like if my agenda was to prove that they, they don't want it, or that the prices are expensive, I would ask a question like that, right? So she was not even representing any kind of a rep from the perspective of why would you ask anybody that? You know, I mean, like, uh, have you ever been asked that from anybody who was 
trying to sell something. All right, so that was uh, out point number one. Uh, number two is, is that on that two camera shoot to the person on the other side, the, um, the candid shot, if you will, it wasn't candid at all, it was a two camera shoot. And so then all of a sudden it cuts right straight from a side view that had a depth of field. That means it was a really high dollar camera and perfect audio. That means she was either mic'd up or they had a, uh, a mic over the top of them that's just out of camera angle. Okay, okay, so I don't even know if this lady that was there is a true person walking down the street or if this was an employee of BBC. Regardless, the perfect audio, she says, the products are expensive. Okay, so there's her proof that the products are expensive. Uh, no, that's not proof, okay? Um, doesn't, now, she doesn't mention toxins like oxybenzone uh, that's in other skincare products. Okay, so if, if I were to set up a table like that, um, how would I do it? The way that I would do it is I would say something, you know, I'm just kind of candidly coming off the top here, but I would say something like, well, um, have you ever wondered why your mascara is so inexpensive or why your skincare is so inexpensive? Something like that to create some curiosity and to let them know that, that what I'm going to show them may be more expensive. Okay? So that would be the way that I would go about doing something like that. And the way that the journalist put this, um, you got to understand something in, in, any, in any situation having to do with sales marketing. Um, if you do not differentiate price, the cheapest price always wins. And see, network marketing's advantage is our ability to communicate and explain things. If you just had, if this was a box of skincare that was sitting on a table or sitting on a shelf, at a department store or a drug store, it doesn't have enough real estate on that little tiny box to ask any questions or to explain anything. So I would have been, you know, like pinging in on oxybenzone because there was recently, May 6th, 2019, a, uh, a clinical trial done and uh, to identify it's in sunscreens, it's in skincare. And what it does is it bioaccumulates, it accumulates over time and women are always putting on makeup and that's what causes it, it causes all these various different like problems. It's cancer, it's uh, endocrine disruptors, uh, hormones and things like that. It jacks them up. So that would be the, uh, the way that I'd go about it. Just the other day, there was a general contractor in our house and, uh, and we were replacing some windows and he says, okay, so this window is $3,000 and this window is $5,000. Which one do you want? And I sit there and I'm like, uh, what am I looking at? You know, and, and he said, well, this window and this window. And I'm like, no, no, no. Um, why is this one $2,000 more? You know, and, and he's like, uh, I don't know. And I go, well, I, I, I don't have any data to differentiate. And so could you find out? Right. So there's a lot of differences in windows. They could be thicker. They could have insulation in them. They could have all kinds of things. Come to find out when I got the information back, it was the inexpensive one had vinyl all the way around the sides so that if you painted it as it went through winter and summer heat uh, contraction in the winter, then it would peel off. The paint would peel off. And I'm like, I want the five thousand dollar ones. I don't want to repaint those things every year. Right. See, so if you do not differentiate between one value and another value, you'll always go with the cheaper one. OK, so this journalist who was pretending to be a rep. No, she wasn't. She was there with an agenda to try to prove the products were expensive. But I would say, no, the real expense is, is that if you got cancer from your skincare, the real expense would be if you're constantly having hormone problems because of your skincare and you don't even know it. And so you change your diet, you change all these other things, but your skincare is messing you up. OK. All right. So uh, and, and just I'm going to reiterate this one right here. If there is any major difference in network marketing and all other forms of marketing, it's, it's what allows us to go away from what the package is and talk about ingredients, talk about the value, okay? 
um, undercover, and I put that in quotes, investigation reveals, wait for it, wait for it, <laughs> millionaires recruit. Okay, all right, newsflash. Uh, same with every millionaire, okay? So you're either going to have to have reps or employees if you want to make millions of dollars, all right? You choose which one you want. If you want employees, get after it. Have fun with it, right? <clears throat> um, because here's the deal. You can't lay enough bricks in your lifetime to make a million dollars. That's the bottom. That's the simplest way that I could ever say it. All right. When you're trading your time for somebody else's dollars, you don't have enough hours in your lifetime in order to make a million dollars. What you're going to have to do is you're going to have to have employees or you're going to have to have reps. OK, or you're going to have to have enough money to invest in companies that have a lot of employees or a lot of reps. Those are your choices in terms of making millions of dollars. And so when this lady acts as though that her undercover report revealed that millionaires recruit people, I'm like, no kidding, All right? You show me the mechanics of wealth. I mean, the mechanics of wealth are very, very clear. You are going to have to have a lot of people doing it because you don't have enough time and you don't have enough talent to do it all. And people who are in small businesses, mom and pop shops, they don't make millions of dollars, okay? So that's not uh, a whole lot of uncover stuff to me. Uh, the last thing that she wanted to prove was is that network marketing is shrouded in secrecy, okay? And so what she does is, is that she says, until there's transparency, I'm like, okay, so she quotes the average income from the network marketing company, which is available right on their website. Okay, so I don't know where the shrouded in secrecy thing has to do with it. Right. So, um, all right. So now, and uh, and if you watch my uh, how network marketing got its reputation, I taught you something in that one, and that is, what? How does she not put it in context? In other words, she had the opportunity to put all of this in context, and if she had, you know, like had a discussion with somebody and ask us any questions who actually know the industry, would have been able to put it into context. Okay. So. She did not interview successful reps in Unique. Why not? Why not? Did not put earnings in context. Okay, so when she talks about, you know, so few people make money uh, in network marketing, I'm like, <laughs> few people make big money. Put a line through network marketing. No, this right here shows the top 1%. How much do top 1% earners and this is from the IRS data, how much do they make? Okay, so for me to be in the top 1%, I live in Utah, then I'm going to have to make $405,000, all right? And, uh, and I am in the top 1%. In fact, I would probably be in the top something, point something, okay? The average of all of them is $380,000 a year. So let me kind of like put that into context. So when she's talking about that network marketing talks about the big money that you can make, okay? And, uh, and they do, right? Like that, that is what causes a lot of people to join. It's what caused me to join because I knew I couldn't make big money in the military, but in network marketing, I could make big money, right? And so when somebody then begins to say that so few people do, well, so few people do anywhere. So if you make a million dollars, you're going to be over into the 0.1% in state or in your network marketing company. And so that's what she failed to put into context. And she should have if she wanted to be a just journalist. All right, let me summarize this. Okay, so why is the media focused on negative network marketing? 800,000 people die from cardiovascular disease. Why aren't they talking about that? It doesn't make any sense. If you've looked at some of the cholesterol books out there, um, like uh, just go to Google and, and type in cholesterol lie, cholesterol scam. Uh, you know, like any negative word you want to, 
and you're going to find a whole lot of cardiologists who have stepped out away from the industry and said, this is destroying us. OK, we're we're taking these statin drugs and they're doing nothing. Um, and 800,000 people a year dying from cardiovascular types of diseases. That's that's a story. That's a lot of damage. Network marketing is not a lot of damage. This is a lot of damage. Um, slavery is at its all time high. So my eight year old son uh, comes in and he starts telling me about the slaves of history. Right. And uh, and, you know, on Memorial Day he was talking about the uh, you know, that if it wasn't for the men who died, then we would have slavery. And I'm like, son, we have more slavery today than we ever have in the history of the planet. He's like, what? Yeah. OK. And it's work and sex slavery. The United States is the highest consumer of sex slavery. Why aren't they talking about this? Don't they have anything better to talk about? Toxins in skin care. Why didn't she talk about that? Why didn't she find a story inside of there of the benefit of where network marketing sits in the skin care space? Why is, and, and I put this statistic out the other day, just in, in my company, 57 millionaires in seven years. Why is that not a story? Why didn't she interview me or any of the successful reps at Unique or anybody, right? In other words, have you noticed that they always find some victim who lost money in order to interview? Why are they afraid to show our successes? That's my question for you. Comment down below and let me know why you think that they're afraid to show our successes. Thanks for watching. I'm Tim Sales.